one day and today we are going to discuss the second part of the detailed summary story in bringing Tony home by Tisabe Seger. If you haven't watched the first two videos on this, the sunset and the first part of this detailed summary, you can watch it first then come back to this video. The earlier part was about how this got fainted and how it got bedridden for three days and this is the continuation of that part. So let's start. So as mother reveals, this uh, came to the house just like a phantom. As this reveals, you can see it in the quotation. He came to the house just like a ghost or a sleepwalker. So as this says, uh, he had been ill for three days. So after the collapse, he had been sick, blazing with fever and speaking in delirium. So after three days, pause, he gets up and he sees Tony was not there. But uh, we don't see a surprise on the part of this uh, because in his heart, he knows this is something to be happened. So he had done something to bring Tony back. In his heart, he must have known the fact that Tony cannot stay in this small house. So you can see this in the quotation. He received the story of Tony's departure from here and there from others' mouths. On the first night, Tony had had the shelter under the bed of Tisha, but as mother and the two years old, Kid had to sleep on the floor when he was tied into the lawn veranda in the back. So having given this unaccustomed treatment, Tony started disturbing the peace of Mr. Mendes who has been lodged in the same house and he starts howling and he gets on the nerves of Mr. Mendes. So as we know, now they are poor, they are living in a very small house. So this house is divided by a wall. In the other part of the house, Mr. Mendes lives. So as the story reveals, he must have given Tony a kick and untied him. So he runs all the way in the rain, it's raining outside. So it is a harsh situation for poor Tony. So he runs to the bedroom door and starts scraping and whining in pain. But the problem is they can't get Tony inside the house because of that now father gets angry and beats him with the ruler so as he as he said he has given him a light punishment but we don't know the exact truth after this commotion mother had to tie him again in the front veranda so it is somewhat uncomfortable because because it is raining outside he gets partly wet but as mother said tony became silent but making the things worse tony had defecated in the veranda so it is quite natural right we see a somewhat humorous scene there, but it is a quite disturbing scene. As Mrs. Mendy said, it had been the most unbearable stage she has ever experienced. But mother said that is not that bad, but uh, this Mrs. Mendy is exaggerating. We can understand that it's quite natural. A dog in the front veranda on their doorstep has defecated. So that is a quite disturbing situation. So you can see the whole house has been dislocated because of this new experience with the dog. So now when the night falls, the things get worse. Tony starts howling and barking again. So what has happened? All the dogs in the area also joins the choir and they also start howling and barking. So it is like a huge halabu. You can see all the village has been dislocated because of Tony's arrival. So as mother reveals, somebody has untied Tony. Probably it must be Mr. Mendy so father, but uh, we don't know the truth. But the bottom line is, in the morning, Tony was not there. So here we can see some complications with regard to rearing dogs. So in his first village, uh, Tony had been accustomed to live in a print environment. He had never been tied. Right now, in the new situation, he has been casted away from his master and he had been tied and he had been given punishments physical punishment so all those things are related to these complications because in a tight house with, without space it is very hard to rear a dog so on the part of this uh, this is father and mother it is fair but on the part of tony it is unfair because 
he had been suffering in those few days. That might be the reason for Tony to leave the house. So after this incident, father has a long discussion with his uh, about what he has done is wrong under the nose of parents. He has taken the example of the story of the boy Casabianca. So the story of Casabianca is about a boy and a father. They went on a voyage. So suddenly the ship got on fire and father, father instructed Casabianca not to move from the spot till father comes. So this Casabianca is a very obedient boy. Father caught on fire and he died and Casabianca knew he soon he is going to be dead because the fire is reaching him. But he remains there because father had given him firm instruction. So Casabianca also got on fire and died. So this is the example taken by the father to tell about the obedience and how a small child behave. He takes the other example from the poem by Lord Tennyson, the charge of the light brigade. They also, we can see the light brigade had gone to fight with an army of cannon using the primitive weapons like sabers. They also almost killed. So these are the two examples taken by father to tell about discipline and how to follow the instructions of the higher authorities or the parents. We see this is somewhat critical about father's instructions. So he explains it in this quotation. The father's conclusion is Tony is an ungrateful animal. So you can see it in the quotation. But we can see mother is somewhat sensible about the emotions of the young boy. So she gives a sensible answer about Tony's departure. You can see that quotation also. So after the departure of Tony, this adapts to the new situation of his life. So we can see his ability to adapt to a new situation in this space. He joins a gang called Sirisanus Gangs in that area. There are some boys. So he joins this gang courtesy to his set of marbles. He had a collection of marbles collected since childhood. So he uses his marbles to join. However, he is an amateur. He loses most of his marbles, but he doesn't mind because he could get the permanent membership of the gang because of these free marbles. Member of boys in this gang is Sirisena and Unidas, uh, Ranal and Ratnapal. But everybody calls this Ratnapal as Thelia. So it has a long story. So it is quite interesting story. You must read that. So when this was in Depana, mother had not given any chance for Tisa to play outside with the other boys. He was brought up inside the house so he was not allowed to go to outside of the house because mainly because he was a sick and feverish child as story says. But mother has been indifferent to Tisa's new behavior. So we can see it in this quotation. Through this we can see mother is somewhat understanding character about the emotions of the child because now this doesn't have Tony, his only companion. Now mother understands he needs a new company, he needs to move on with his life. So on that part, mother is very sensible to give this to be socialized, to be a part of the human society. In this space we can see the emotional development of this. We see his gradual development into adolescence. When he sees the naked legs of Ranal's sister, he sees, he feels that his emotions are itching inside him. That shows his gradual development of emotions. So it is quite natural to, uh, to a boy to feel these kind of things. It shows this is a normal boy, but up to that point, he has never associated anybody outside now. We can see his emotional development in this place. As a summary, we can see it's an indication that the boy is physically and mentally growing into the early adulthood. The freedom with the boys brings some light to the sad life of this. It slowly makes him forget about his only companion, Tony. 
but things are going to be changed because mother sends him to Depanam again to bring some money borrowed from Mrs. Lawrence. It's a landmark day of Tissa and Tony in the story. This is where Tissa meets Tony for the last time in his life. However, mother firmly instructs not to do any fancy things this time. He's also determined to not to do this kind of thing because now he has a new gang. He wants to join the gang as soon as possible because they are going to play cricket in the evening. But something is bothering inside him. You can see this quotation. So we can see his only fear is to meet Tony again. So why does he fear to see Tony again? That is, he knows that he cannot bring Tony back. So meeting Tony means just like hurting both of them because Tony has no chance to come back to his master. So, so this decides to finish his job as soon as possible and join his gang. So when he meets his old friends called three brothers, Piyasena, Jayasena and Jinadasa, he evades them because he doesn't want to linger around because he doesn't want to stay there. He knew that uh, if he stays there, there is a bigger possibility to meet Tony again. So he won't finish the job as soon as possible and come back. To his consolation, he gets the news from the Laura Pereira's house that Tony has found a new house. So you can see that in this quotation. We can see that Tony has also been adapted to the new situation of his life without a master. So he has found a new house. He has found a new way to live. Let's see what will happen now. But somewhere in the mind of this, he knew that Tony would appear and meet him. There is a psychological theme that shows he has the desire to meet Tony because he had been his only companion for a long period of time. So in his heart, he knew that. So it's like an instinct that uh, Tony would come and meet him. So it happens. So he meets Tony. He suddenly comes from nowhere and meets him. It's not the dog he used to know. It has been a distorted form of the dog he has seen. Tony was there only from its face. He has physically changed so much. You can see it in this quotation. So we can see this new form of Tony creates a scar in the heart of this because he sees that dog has become a stray dog. So it's all over, woods everywhere. But he sees Tony's loyalty is the same and his love is the same. He understands this, this everything happens because of them. Because of them, Tony has lost his care in the house. This meeting creates an everlasting scar of grief in the heart of this as he sees what has happened to his beloved dog after they left him behind. And we see the desperation of this because he has no intention to take him back because he knows in his new place Tony has no space. So this is a quite touching moment in the story. But we see Tony has another plan to join his master with another adventurous journey because Tony follows the footstep of this. So this does something against his heart. He buys a barn from the boutique and bribes Tony with that bar and uh, while Tony is eating the bun, he turns back and runs as fast as he could. This is the last time this sees Tony and the other thing is he has no intention to see Tony again. His word says that. You can see this in this quotation. So the second segment of the novel ends with an open ending, leaving the fate of the Tony to the time. Though the time duration is less than one month in this segment, this portion of the story creates an everlasting impact in the life of the protagonist in the story. His whole life has been haunted by the guilty feelings and the memories of Tony who had been left unceremoniously behind. Hope this detailed summary would help you to understand to get an idea about the portion of Tony 
in this story being torn home by the subject we have included some quotations to make the video somewhat worthwhile and for your exam purposes also so we hope to do a, another video on the next part the little train meanwhile if you haven't subscribed our channel you can subscribe and stay in touch then you will know when the video release as soon as possible so that's the end of this video if you want to read this post in our blog you can visit blitzprint.com and it is always there in black and white and that's the end of today's video let's meet soon have a nice day bye bye